Hi there, um, Linux users of the world. If uh, you're using Linux and you're interested in making videos and whatever, you've probably come across the problem of uh, working with 360 footage in Linux in that that doesn't seem to be anybody that supports Linux natively with their software. So all 360 cameras use some sort of software to do their stitching or whatever. So uh, in, in my case, I've got this wonderful uh, Insta360 X4, which is an amazing camera. Unfortunately, they follow the same thing in that the X4 uh, is not supported in Linux. So I've been moaning at them for a little while and that didn't get anywhere. So. I found somewhere online that you can install something called Bottles on your Linux. So let's just open Bottles here, and uh, just just to show you what I'm what I'm on about. There, I've got Insta360 installed, and I can run it. And then once once that opens, you can see 360 Studio on Linux. And what I had there was. Uh, still had an issue in that it didn't have any graphics acceleration so here you can go i can open one of my files import it and there we are and here you can see i'm i'm moving around there i am happily wandering around in norway so um if you look at menu and settings and preferences you see in my install i've got all the hardware uh, enabled all the hardware acceleration enabled so how how do you get there? How do you get there? So, what I'm going to do is just uh, start a new bottle. And uh, just for you guys, we'll put it in as an example. Uh, can't even type anymore. So, stick it in this application. And you create your bottle. And it takes takes a second or so. It's not a, not a big deal, but... Uh, yeah, once once it's alive, uh, you have a, a simulated Windows environment. So in my example bottle, I can go in there now, and I can run an executable, which in this case is uh, in my home directory under software, Windows, that will be Insta360 544. I think that's the latest one I've got. So we'll just run that one. And uh, yeah, it installs absolutely with no problem. And yeah, it just clicks through everything. And uh, yeah, that, that takes a second. So uh, I was really happy to see this the first time around because that means I don't have to have a copy of Windows around just to edit my 360 files. I can just edit them directly in my normal uh, workspace. So that, of course, that that exuberance and that, that happiness only lasted until um, I figured out there was no hardware acceleration for it, and it was so choppy. It was, it was really disheartening, so I ended up um, keeping a copy of Windows around and just just for that. Uh, of course, Windows takes 200 plus gigabytes just to have a usable Windows. <clears throat> and uh, no end of heartache with this thing as well. So uh, I ended up buying a really ultra powerful laptop just to see if I can brute force this thing into something usable. But uh, again, it, it just didn't work, you know, it was just painful. So you can see there's my UI and I'm just going to not install uh, this version. And if you go to menu and settings, you'll see on preferences, the hardware encoder and decoder are disabled. So if I were to open a file here from my documents videos. Oh, there's just nothing there. How, how is that possible? Hmm. It is. Hmm. Okay. 
more than one way to skin a cat so let's just do it the proper way as you can see the UI is really small there is a good way of fixing that I'll show you in a second but let's go to videos own footage stock 360 world 24 fast and and uh, just to show as a comparison so this is almost top of the line laptop and uh, as you can see it's it's a lot slower just because there's no no hardware acceleration on the thing and it just just crashed you know so then the the UI you can do advanced display settings you can set your DPI version to, or delta beams to something higher if you have a high resolution screen that should fix that and how to get around the old uh, uh, 360 studio uh, just uh, getting getting hardware acceleration so there you can see a nice nice larger thing remind me later open files we'll try this one again and file the I got it what the hell that's really interesting I'm right, thinking about it now as you can see it really really struggles so while it's thinking about that I found this guy on github up and now uh, I'll just make it nice big for you guys so there he, there he is and he's got something called Nvidia Libs and I bitched and learned a bit about it because it didn't seem to find my specific video card however if you go to his code now there is a download and he tells you how to how to get this thing so um on on the downloads of bottles you can oh dear where did i find it code oh yeah you can get this release and uh, there you are you can download that one nvidia libs 0.8.1 and that ooh, there's a newer version than the one I've got no that doesn't matter so there we go Nvidia Libs when you extracted it that's that's what you get we can make it a bit bigger so you can follow along but yeah there's there's that directory so in this directory there's a bottle so it's set up um, file I'll just open it and if you install bottles normally which is the flatback thing uh, this directory will be something different and the default works for the default bottles however because I installed bottles through Arc Linux um, this is the correct directory for Arc Linux so that's where your bottles live in Arc Linux and you need to edit this file and correct that directory so once you have that you can uh, open a terminal there there's my lovely terminal like a nice and big and we'll just run bottle setup and it tells me okay your bottle is not set so you run this thing again and you tell it to install into example and there you go bottles are installed into the example and that is it so we'll terminate this little program and sometimes it doesn't terminate nicely and you've got to go kill it some some horrible horrible way and it looks like this is this is where we are today so uh, mm, oh dear I wonder let's let's see if I can kill it some nice way um, oldie but goldie X no 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 just pull it away from there X kill and kill me that guy there you go so 
this should in theory now stop and return but uh, of course it's not it's just gonna yeah there's still some program files running let's see explore desktop studio here we go this is the guy or we'll kill the parent hopefully that takes the children along doesn't go well okay all right this took a little while okay so um i'll fire it up again and see if it's any better now so there we go uh, remind me later menu settings preferences oh dear it didn't pick it up now unfortunately you'll have to exit this guy and uh, go into legacy wine tools configuration libraries up there scroll down to nvcuda edit it built in then native apply that apply that okay that and i can see this little something hanging around there so let's do yes minus if um, yeah there's still there's still this guy uh, i'll kill it nicely and uh, also this guy no oh dear these things Sometimes it doesn't shut down nicely, especially. Okay, there's no more of that. Let's try again now. We'll fire it up and see. So, probing the system configuration, it uh, tells me there's a new update. You can install the update. So I'm, I'm just not going to do this for privacy persons. Settings, preferences. And we're still without a hardware encoder. How is that possible? Hmm. Now, that used to be the, the little magic bit that worked for me, but uh, I'm going to quit from here and just change my runner to my system wine. So, in bottles, you can pick which version of wine you run, and uh, of course, some, some of them are better than others. Let's just see if there's still a studio running around now. Okay. Back out. <clears throat> this configuration, let's let's give it another go. Libraries. Invicuda is there. And let's edit that one. Change it native then built in. Apply that. Okay. I will, we'll give it a go. So it fires up, checks everything, and uh, remind me later, settings, preferences. Oh, well, I'm just gonna tell it to use it. Exit, try again. And oh dear, remind me of later settings, preferences. Nope, still no hardware support. So, in settings, let's go find something else. So, in the API, latency flex, I'll switch this one on, use the discrete graphics card, and give that a go. So Play. There's, there's a few things you can edit on on this thing. So checking again system configuration, and uh, I think that might have been done. It. Let's let's see. We'll play the. There we go. Yeah. So my system has two video cards. One is AMD, and of course CUDA is not going to work on that. So there we go. Hardware acceleration enabled. Open a file. Now it should be in documents videos. 
and uh, it's uh, certainly a lot heavier now. Footage stock 360 world 24. Um, fasten just to be fair and run, load that file open, and uh, takes a second, of course, as usual. And now it should just fly. And so yeah, and that's hardware acceleration. In uh, in Linux, so you can get that up. You can see there's really high resolution. Go away. And yeah, you can play it. Okay. Um, a little bit jerky now. I don't know what that is about. Hardware decoder, hardware acceleration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll restart the software. Um, you can you can play around with models, definitely, and uh, it. This is how to get the hardware acceleration. A little bit of tweaks here and there. You might be get, getting it to run a lot better, like uh, like the other version I showed you. Uh, I'm I'm just going to delete this bottle now. Uh, bottles on on average is a pretty good program. So uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps you a little bit if you do want to run your 360 software in. Uh, Linux. Uh, I've tried some other manufacturers. I've had various levels of success. I know Insta360 works really well on Linux once you've enabled the NVA or the NVCUDA directories from the Svesov guy. Okay, goodbye.